appropriately, and Copenhagen Flames now clashing with FaZe. It is somewhat of a David versus Goliath story, but if you have just caught any of the action of the previous series, you know how they can end. Simon Gaming, we just spoke to Neilan, and they're having an absolute field day with their victory versus Na'Vi. We're into the pistol. Let's get this one started. Wow. We are getting into it right now. We'll see whether Copenhagen Flames can make a dent against the mighty FaZe Clan here. We are going to see smokes available for Hooksy and Nodius. They've got a little boost there. The bridge is well waiting for that aggression. You can see they're going to be a tactical team. That tells yeah. me already, Chad, with those sort of plays, you're dead on. These are Kinos. That Kinos. Are the ready to go. They're going to be showing us smokes they've never seen before. Some crazy flashes. It's going to be a lot of fun. And FaZe, I'm sure they'll be aware of it, but this is one of the games they're going to struggle on, I think. Just because they just won't be expecting some of the moves that we right. out. Yeah, for example, three people contact playing at Sprokey's Jiggle. He's going to catch more than he bargained for, and he's right out of there. So it's Cold Zera, though. Farlig, he starts as he means to go on. One bullet from the Glock, and one Cold Zera in spawn. He's forced back there. Five versus four now. So Nodios, he's on that corner just to throw this smoke. There it goes. Oh, it's a commitment here, and they've actually rotated a player over towards the B-bomb side. Oh, my side. God, so yeah. FaZe Clan have taken a gamble. It hasn't paid on off, and... Oh, Olaf is very lucky to be alive as well. So at this point, if you're FaZe, is the retake on the cards? Yeah, Bomb's about to go it down. It better be. Maybe not anymore. Refresh catches Olaf before the cavalry could arrive. They're rotating in now, but... Yeah, I don't know what you can really achieve here. They've even got such pushed-up positions. Middle is theirs. They've got second mid-angles for no Nodius. Nodius. <laughs> uh, we'll go with Nodius for now. Nodius it is. Okay. So it is going to be a very convincing round here from the Young Flames. Oof. Nodius will be taken down by Rain here as they try and hold onto the smoke. Couple of flashes down that fuse kit. Nico exploring his options. He probably gets his kill, to be honest. He's worked hard for it, but it's refreshed. Willing to challenge once more the Glock. Completely destroys him there as well. So that's great. Four and two. And it will be the round for Copenhagen Flames. A great way to kick off their T-side campaign. The apps... Very effective. Hooksy will be going down with the ship. And there we have it. First on the board. Broken and Rain will survive, but don't really save too much to write home about. The Diffuse Kit will be pivotal in their success. Maybe the Smoke as well and Rain. It doesn't have to expend too much to get armor. Just quickly, ages of uh, the Copenhagen Flames players. Average is 22. Oof. The uh, oldest player on the team is actually uh, Hooksy, who is 24. The rest of them are ranging between 20 and 22. So quite a young squad. Not as young as the uh, the Gambit youngsters, but they're definitely down the bottom. No, that'll be the Copenhagen youngsters. Uh, soon. 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 Well, the Force, of course. The Smokes as well. A couple of nades. Some Deagles. Okay, jump in for the info around that smoke, quite nice. Nico ensuring that deep smoke is there to regain some control. And he's managed to do that all on his own. Olof boosted here, and it should translate into a chance. Olof Meister working with Cold Zera here towards middle, and there are plenty of T's about to walk into his cross there, but flashbangs normally deployed as well. HE oh. is fantastic. There's severe damage to a couple of players there, and we can see Olaf Meissen anti-flash for now. He'll be spotted. Rain will pull one back. We know he's good towards the quad. Whoa, can he find dear. a third on for the hat trick here? Probably better off falling back at this stage. He has been tagged to 36. Cold Zero spots one more, and they've got a winnable situation here. Four versus two. Refresh with a great flash. That's a kill. Nice move. Really nice stuff. He threw that smoke down on Long, thought that that was a... Perfect situation for the oh. CT's reign still going. My God, he finds a third. The Norwegian is furious. He's foaming at the mouth and he's found himself a triple kill. Noddy right here. He should probably just save. Can we just call him Noddy? Noddy. Do you remember Noddy? I love Noddy. Oh, of course. He's given it a crack though. Has the bomb on his back here. If he's able to take down Rain, who is on low HP, the plant could come in. He will get a free shot here. I think he's, he's hidden by the pillar, no? He's in that very common spot. Yeah, safe. Spotted. Could go down. Nodios firing off a shot, but close quarters broke. He just not spotted at all. He doesn't know where to look. And they'll take away at least one AK into the next. Make it two as Rain scavenges the second. Big Perfect. round for phase. Desert Eagles and Rain, apparently a bit of a master with the weapon. Very impressive headshots there on the A-bomb site. And it's going to force Copenhagen into an investment as well. More of the same Desert Eagles. No Galil's available, maybe for Queen X. 
at the top end there with two and a half grand, but he'll go for the Desert Eagle and get himself some utility, the only bit they've got. So Farlig, here's the AWPA as well. I looked at the, the stats after my question there. So Ooh. he's mainly using the AWP, so yeah. out for him. And speaking of him, apparently it's in Danish it would be Farley, but uh, with Gade, we call him Gade, so I think we'll stick with the yeah, Farlig for now. we don't call Anders Annas. We don't so, call him Annas. <laughs> so uh, I feel like we have to just go with Farlig. Thank you for the information all the same. Uh, I do appreciate it. Sometimes I can't pronounce all the words. You yeah, know? The, the, I don't have that. When, when different languages start pronouncing different letters differently, that's yeah. when it can get a bit of an issue. Like, Gade is apparently no D whatsoever. The Danes swallow the D. That's, when I've, that's what I've heard. Rain's got the flashbang, so when Nico calls for it, he's positioned for it now. So it's just a question of when he says, now, here it comes. One, and done. Damn, Queenix quick to take the trade, and now Rain under a little bit of pressure. It's a bit of a gap in that smoke. They can maybe try and exploit it, and they do. It's what Rain wanted, though. In through the smoke, only getting one. This is pretty damn good from Copenhagen Flames. Well, we will see Hooksy open things up if the bomb will go down, but still so much work to do. Brokey. He's arrived early. He's got the diffuse kit. There's plenty of utility. They want to be smoking off towards B, maybe the incendiary towards Emo. That would be great considering they've gone for the double stack there. They're hoping that position's not checked. One player goes down. They don't assume the second's there. Smoke for Banana, and they use the incendiary towards new boxes. So absolutely fine. Quidditch will go down courtesy of the incendiary. And now this is where, will they check Emo twice? I think Refresh knows they will. He has to challenge, and that is just beautiful from Cold Zero. We keep saying it, Alex. He is going to be the MVP for phase down in his map. He always used to perform for SK Gaming, Luminosity, you name it. Yeah. And right now, showing us what he's made of. Yeah, no doubt. Cold Zera on Inferno. He's so comfortable. And those kills came in such quick succession. You've really got to watch out for him. And then you read through the, the, the phase roster and you realize, okay, so Rain will just triple kill us with the Deagle. Cold Zera will triple kill us on the retake. Nico exists. And you've got Brokey, who could not be any more hungry and surrounded by some of the smartest to ever play the game. He's going to learn fast, and he has been, actually, really turning it up. They saw something in the uh, young Latvian on his trial, and I think that storyline's one that I expect to see elaborated upon as he continues his tenure with the team. Glocks, P250s, no armor. And towards the apartments we go. So I'd expect the contact smoke towards the end of the apartments here, but that's if they even get there. We can see it will be all off mice at the very end. And if he gets a bit of information here, they might not stand a chance. Drops down the incendiary, allows them to swing off it and hunt for more intel as the smoke for top and middle will be delivered. Flashbang as well. And it's going to burst out of boiler. Hope for the best here. Okay, well, he spotted them all. All off. He's going to have some heads to deal with here, and Queenix trying to force him off. Gets the first, and Refresh has actually got another one. This is getting a bit nerve-wracking. With P250s, he's given multiple targets. They overwhelm. And now they've got rifles and a man advantage. There is no Kevlar, but I'm already getting nervous. That bomb is loose on sight. They've leaned entirely towards Pit. They'll smoke before they leave their hidey holes. I love it. This is looking quite promising with plenty of time remaining as well. Refresh takes a little bit of damage there, down to 35. Needs to recover the bomb. Looks like he's absolutely fine to do so. That will get planted now. They actually have three rifles here. No armor at all. A single flashbang as well, but they have the advantage. What a great little pounce from Boiler. An instant bloom smoke. The flashbang to follow it up, and five players just barreling towards the A side. Will it be enough though? Nico, he'll pull a kill back, but still two to find. Unless he gets his kills straight away, I don't think they have a chance here. It's looking great now for Copenhagen Flames. But bear in mind, no armor. Couple of bullets will take them down. Yeah, he's pushing in, and finally they find the frags. Copenhagen Flames, an incredible round, all things considered, but phase stabilizing thanks to Nico and his double kill. That was well handled, all things considered. Everything about that round was was great, other than the pit players from phase, right? I, Henry's bang on that little explosion. We don't normally see teams doing it in that fashion. I was saying, we need to learn that one, boys. Yeah. That's a real easy one to bring out. You get some basic apartment control, that one smoke before they can even comments come through. It blooms, a flashbang follows it up, and everyone's through quad. Yeah. From you, Boiler, right? Yeah, exactly. Four players in Boiler yeah. ready to go. And it's just such an explosive strategy. I'm not even sure how you counter that. You can't comment, especially on an online I game. I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing a few more of that kind of strat. And uh, big teams, tier one teams, will be calling that the Copenhagen Flames. <laughs> We've heard about the Mad Lions executes on Nuke. Well, there's a whole lot more of them that will be scooped up and recycled by all the teams that find the, uh, the idea inspiring. 
Yeah, the smoke he threw it from Vietnam. So he just lobs it, left clicks yeah. it, it so pops hit, straight he, away. He throw it in a certain way so he could pop the flash off instantaneously afterwards, right? So as soon as that comes in, the smoke blooms. The second the flashbang goes off as well, you can't even handle it. You're blind. What do you call it? Teammates completely Something off. middle? Yeah, it's <laughs> a, a flash. Really, it's a really cool strap. Maybe in the post game, we'll, we'll yeah. kind of bring it up and have a look at it. But for now, we're into another one, and it's a big one. Na Nodius has taken some damage, as has Farlig, and they're going to be doing the retake smoke. So watch Hooksy's decision making here. He hugs the wall and gets forced into the open, which actually works out well for him. He wins the duel versus Nico. He's very ready for that maneuver. They don't have to commit off of this right now. They can just bait out any residual CT utility. And actually, Hooksy's just walking in for more entries. They can pounce. Yeah, Flash doesn't really catch him. And looks like Rain was ready. He was so far ahead of the pack. Broke, he's pushed the smoke. Rain, he's sticking around. He's realized he's in a little bit of a hot water, flashing himself out to buy some more time. It count four Farlig and oh. a great shot. Damn, Rain is sharp today. Baiting them in nicely. He still wants to take that fight. He had no other options to be fair. Brokey gonna be forced off the line. They heard the scope. The rotates come in. It's Cold Zero and Olaf to support him. And he's actually gonna be forced forward on that Molotov. Queenix can't believe his luck. Uh-oh. Queenix has got another. He knows where they lie. Olaf does trade onto the Orpa. Highest rated player for Copenhagen oh. Flames on their road to Rio. Now he's just got a clutch up versus Olaf Meister. Yeah, just that. And I think he's done it, you know. That's a great position. He actually plays that very well. This team has got some tricks at their sleeve and some capable players, it seems. Right. What's the money looking like for FaZe? Not good, boys. $2,000 on average. Lost bonus coming in at 1900 next round. Are you buying into this one, Chad? I don't think so. Nah, there should be the save here, right? Next round, if they... Okay, all right. So they're limping in. Nico has still 450 left. So they can do two rounds like this back to back, right? If they want to just keep a, a little bit of residual cash, they can go for two rounds along these lines, still be threatening, still have the opportunity for winning because it is FaZe Clan after all. We've seen them do some absolutely dirty things with Deagles just this game alone. Yeah, round two, I encourage you to take a look at. Perfect example. I've also uh, got a Cold Zero Deagle round on the A bomb side of Dust 2 in mind. And there was one on Mirage as well. Yeah. So they keep stacking up. Yeah, Nico had some crazy deagle shots recently on his stream as well. Oh, the stack nade. Nodios cannot believe it. And they push straight into Hooksy with some very calm spray. That could have spiraled so quickly, but he's just handled it, shrugged it off. Well, it looks like it might be enough as well up against these Desert Eagles. Brokey of no armor. Zero six for Nodius, but doesn't seem to be holding back Copenhagen Flames. A huge round here. If they can find this, they'll tie things up. Just one player in the form of Cold Zera. Resided in the B bomb side, but I've commentated plenty of rounds. He's just got a deagle. <laughs> Trust me, this guy, he can do unspeakable things with the pistol. It might just start here. I mean, he can certainly give it his all. Utility, steps, bullets. He knows it's a B. He knows they're coming. Knows his check is important. Waits for it. Perfect it shot. Looking for a second as well. That rifle is so tempting. Such a tempting prospect. He will eventually go down. Two bullets connecting into the cavity of Queenix. He's in trouble. Oh. Oh, oh, no, he's not. He didn't away. see him. And he's crossed back. My God, the guy's defying all odds. And now he's got another chance. Queenix still living with it, 10 HP. One of those bullets could have done it. Farley can clutch as well. They might as well just fall this, I would say. Just get... Some feathers ruffled at this stage. Olaf Meister gets the first kill. They know exactly where the final player is. And there it is. It's converted. He gets off the bomb. There's a quick scope from the AWP. And FaZe Clan went out with that great shot from Cold Zero. I have to say, he had to find at least one at that point. He gets one and a half, low HP. Olaf's able to convert it. And there we have it. FaZe on pretty much an eco there. That was barely a partial buy. I must have missed something. But how did Olaf get that free frag on the orb? Did they just not assume there'd be a banana player on the retake? I think it was it was either Hooksy or Queenix. Yeah, Queenix. Okay, he had right? a look, right? Well, I don't think he was... He, he was being called to do something in the bomb side, yeah. right? They needed him for whatever reason, and he didn't even consider Banana as he went back. So Olaf got all the information, and the rest of uh, the teammates on Copenhagen Flames assumed Banana right. was clear because they had a teammate just there. But we might get another pocket strategy just here. So we've got the pistols coming out, a decent amount of utility behind it. Let's see if they have any more tricks up their sleeve. Or in the cards. In the cards, indeed. So, Tech 9s available for Copenhagen Flames. We know they can execute towards the A side, but it's a good incendiary, Olaf Meister. He fends off the threat. 
smoke Ooh. now towards the pit side, it seems. This is it the pit wall of smokes? Yeah, That's something. That, that would be the, the go-to call here. You do the, the wall of smokes in front of the pit, get four players inside if you can, and then you see whether kills They've got six you. flashes. You could just flash through those smokes yeah. afterwards. It's certainly not they, impossible. They, I think you need three, though, for the perfect wall of smokes towards the pit. They could ah. definitely get in there, but it wouldn't be like the open shot case of segregating a CT player and maybe getting a rifle. And they also lack the Molotovs to do the second stage of that. Once you get pick control, you can Molotov the site. We've actually seen that work against FaZe Clan before. It was North who pulled that That's one off, right. and, yes. and we were surprised that they weren't ready for that type of a that, round. That was a really nice execution for North. It's very powerful, and this is the exact sort of team I expect to bring those sort of plays out. Very technical. We normally say that teams like FaZe don't have enough time with their travel schedule to really develop these sort of strategies, but we see plenty of it from the likes of Copenhagen Flames. Nico, aggressive, works out for the first kill. Pretty much commits them towards A. They're going to have to go any second now. There's the flash. They'll try and make their way out, but Colterra mowing them down here. No problem whatsoever. That's the bomb down. And falling. he won't have much to say about it. So no real set piece there. Nico pushing down Banana, really foiled their efforts. But we go 5-2. After losing the pistol, Face Clan started to stabilize quite nicely. The orbs out for Brokey. I don't think we'll see an orb on the T side. Farlick hasn't... Lent into it as of yet, considering it's the T side of Inferno. Haven't seen a frag from Nodius either. Yeah, one ADR. Yeah, that's really not ideal. He's not even giving me assistance. <laughs> you don't want to be at one ADR. <laughs> Definitely not. Four towards B, though. And uh, they're anticipating maybe a bit of B presence here. Some challenges towards the top, and they're dead on. They're certainly getting it. Good grenades. Oh, Farlick's oh, death. Oh. That's beautiful. First, they'd got the double nade kill on tree, and now they want to take Banana. Nico's got friends. Rain's straight behind him for the trade, and just like that, three players from Copenhagen Flames are sent straight back to the spawn. They'll be forced to watch as the rest of this round. It could be like uh, one minute, 20 seconds of Queenix and Refresh just begging FaZe to walk into their crosshair. He'll re-smoke on that. Maintain that control and deny all of it for refresh. Queenix taking space though. Yeah, Queenix will have to be the linchpin of this operation. If he does somehow kill the player towards the pit, then maybe onto something. But he's got to deal with Coltera as well. He'll actually be finding a very strong position. Olaf Meister. Oh, the feet. Did he catch it under I the wheel? I feel like he did. Regardless of the kill, Olaf Meister will bring it down to a four versus one and refresh. Bear in mind who's on the other side of the map here. He's hoping his teammate will be able to get a kill, leave it just one towards B. That's still the case, to be honest with you doesn't increase his chances. Yeah, Rain hasn't been missing much here, and he's got the pre-fire, or rather the pre-aim. Okay, some space, and actually, potentially, well, now then, a Molotov does make things difficult. Refresh going for the plant, faking it out for the 1v1. Rain giving him nothing, but the spray is good, and Refresh, he's cut them down to oh. size! A shot out of nowhere! Brokey can't believe it! Scratching his head, long range, shut down, two to find in a 1v4, and he's gone down to Cold Zero. My God, was that a good attempt. Fantastic work then, Refresh. Certainly we've been in the hours on the DM, it seems. Crispy aim displayed as he takes down two of the AK-47. Cold Zero, though, very sharp on Inferno so far. He'll be taking him down, but a fantastic effort. It gives him some money as well. Their loss bonus will be at $2,900, so the bomb going down might even lead them to another purchase here. They could be tempted with three kills found, and as you can see, there will be a buy, but a few compromises for the form of Hoopsie. There's way down. This is where the doors open. Shot through the smoke. Great kill on CT spawn as well. That's an orb. <laughs> Who was watching his position? So do they want to invest much? There's going to be another partial buy, which is fine. Early days here. It's a bit of a daunting scoreline for sure, but... Uh, Take this one easy, you can still win these rounds. I'd like to see more execution though, see what the technicalities they've got up their sleeve. Maybe a bit of aggression in the CTs here. Olaf Meister heading towards second middle, jumps across from some intel, does spot one. Now you don't necessarily want to go for that kill, but it's jumping over and looking down second middle. If you see four players there, great information. If you see nothing, also the same thing, but you can't really bank on that because it could be going much slower. Boosting the logs here. And if phase plays correctly, they should be able to Work out, they're up against pistols, play defensively. A nice boost in spawn would be good, but we're seeing that pre fight a lot these days. Ideally, you want a CT below you to take all the aggro and spray through the smoke so they don't come in pre fire in the boost. 
And if you can deploy a nade like that as well, that's not bad. Can we get a utility damage check in at some point? Uh, we'll uh, have to have Rush take a picture of it and yeah, send it to us. Let's do it when one of the teams hits double digits. Yeah, we'll, perfect. We'll, we'll work it out then. Because I do feel like FaZe have been catching a lot of good damage here. This could be another problem because Nico's gone down with nothing. A nade in his hand is down to rain and he's only going to find two. Copenhagen flames a burst. Wow. Oh. Brokey through the smoke. That is actually such a huge lifeline. Yeah, it really is. There's still a lot of work to do here, but they've got the utility the same as before. They can smoke off banana. They can incendiary towards the back right or new boxes. Olaf Meister. Wow. Absolutely obliterated by the Tech 9 there. Farlik manages to find a two on two. Time ticking away. The halfway point now as well. And he still looks like he's up for it. Six kills to his name and no armor. But if they rush towards his orbit, this could be enough here, and it's going to be. Brokey goes down, and now the one versus two. Coldera on the bomb, but it's not going to be enough. A partial by victory now. The Copenhagen Flames, Tech 9, some flashes. They get that opening kill towards B, and that's going to be it. They've got a massive injection of cash. They've looked more threatening on those type of rounds, haven't they? Where they yeah. catch FaZe off guard. You can see Nico. it's not often you see him as an individual getting caught with a grenade in his hands. Rain did the best he could to mop up that situation. His job was literally just to play off of Nico's contact. Getting two, it's okay. Three would have been the dream, but now for FaZe, they're back down to pistols. Can they win another Deagle round? Oh, I mean, just contact play worked so well there. I wonder what would it, it would look like if you did something similar with the rifles, but they have the advantage now. It's time for Copenhagen Flames to try and close this gap. Desert Eagles. Up against a full buy here of Copenhagen Flames. Good start for Brokey, but didn't find the one dig. He might have survived had he have found it, but at this stage, one by one, they're starting to go down. FaZe will drop the ball. Oh. Once again, it's that Desert Eagle of Cold Zero that looks so powerful. Not so much for Rain. He does half damage towards Farleg, and they can get the bomb planted. It's up to Nico now. Has oh. to hit this shot, and it's a remarkable one. Bomb planted. Farleg already know, and they're using the buddy system here. They've got an AK-47. Surely they win this round. It's looking so good for them. It really is. I think they've spotted him, and Rain will close it out. FaZe, they've done it again with just Deagles. So Copenhagen Flames win their armored Tech 9s. FaZe win their unarmored Deagles. Maybe no one should buy any weapons. Let's all just save, and let's shoot each other with pistols. I would be more than happy if we did pistols only for the rest of the game. They can you still use utility. Yeah, utility, fine. Look at this from Cold Zero. He's got seven HP, by the way. Oh he knows God. there's two people long looking at him, and he gets that shot. I don't know. I don't know. They make the weapon work in a ways I don't think many of us can. I swear Queenix, as he's releasing that Molotov, and he sees Nico there at quad side, is just having his life flash before <laughs> his eyes. Like, oh, uh, no, I messed uh, up, didn't I? I'm in the open, uh, and he's got a D. Goal. Great shot. Wouldn't have uh, been as punishing if you didn't have Cold Zero and Nico behind those deagles. So, the first tactical timeout will be called by Copenhagen Flames. After losing to the Desert Eagles, they feel a little bit rattled after that. But bear in mind, they wanted Nico <laughs> before, so they do have plenty of money, at least, for a buy. Uh, but now, Brokey, he'll have the AWP out. They should have an AK-47 within their ranks as well. That's going to be held by Rain. And here we go. A very important round here. Indicative of who will be taking this one. Phase currently up seven to three. It doesn't feel like the scoreline is that big of a disparity. No, I think it's really. doing a little bit of uh, injustice to how close some of these rounds have been. We've had five post-plant situations where FaZe have had to defuse, and then we had the round with the Tech Nines before where they got the bomb down. So lots of post-plant scenarios in play here. Oh, Cold Zero wants to bring the fight down middle this round. It's no utility to uh, give a sign to it. He just wants to go blind. It's a flash from Nico. That's from B. And he's got two. Cold Zera off the leash. He wants to go for more. A smoke tea stairs. He's taken so much space. And I have a feeling Queenix, his days could be numbered as well. I Eric think Queenix oh. gets in the flash is great. That's Farley thinking on his feet at that point. That's really nice play. And uh, we'll see if they can recover this one now as Olof Meister oversteps the mark as well. Oh dear. Hello, T-side Orping. That was a five on three. And A's open as well, so if they're quick, they can get a plant, but Nico's going to do his best to take away as much space as he can. They are barreling through apartments right now. He won't get there in time to stop this. Nope, but he has the information. That's not going to be particularly well-received information because Rain's just been told he's got to win a 1v3. Mission accepted. 
And retreating with an AWP. Great work. Copenhagen Flames and they win it with the guns. Farlig, though, gets the MVP of that round. The, the problem with FaZe is because they keep winning these Deagle rounds and then they only allow Copenhagen Flames to get one round on the board, that keeps resetting them back to the minimum, uh, well, yeah, the minimum loss bonus, right? Of $1,400 yeah. each and every time. So unless they lose those kills early and decide, oh, we better save, you're going to see this happen time and time again. Refresh is aware that the AWP may have been salvaged, doing his best to see if he can take it away. But yeah, FaZe, they did such a great job. Everything looked great. And then, yeah, that flash you were talking about was was perfect. I love the thinking on the feet there from Copenhagen Flames. Yeah, that, that's what it's all about, right? Having some little moves, knowing you can get yourself out of those dodgy scenarios as well. Good comms as well. You've got a player in the form of Queen. He's towards the underpass. He knows that Cold Zero is likely looking to it. His team has been flashed off or smoked off in this case. And this is when they can deploy the flashbang. It couldn't have been better. It's great communication. And like I said, a five on three, you would assume they're going to win that round. But Olaf Meister, after losing a couple of kills, he pushes the second middle. And Farlik, he just runs away with the round there. Seven to four. But there is a buy in response. FaZe did save the orb. A couple of Famasis here. It's pretty decent, all things considered. All of Meister will be purchasing a few grenades at the end there. Should be absolutely fine. They've got four defuse kits. And in terms of the aggression, they're going to be sending Nico towards Banana. And he's going to be met by great aggression on the T side. A fantastic shot at Mac 10. Oh. Hoogsy will find the second. And they can put the brakes on for now. Yeah, damage done. Both B defenders dead. Well, they know Cold's there because he's thrown a bunch of nades himself. This will freeze them in place for a moment. It is just Brokey over towards A to defend with the AWP. And the issue here is he can't really now go and re-pick middle without risking his life. Staying in halls with the AWP for the entirety of the round, that's a, a no-go. So he's going to have to get in transition at some point here. They're putting faith in Cold Zero like we saw on one of the Deagle rounds before and he was able to grab a cheeky kill. He needs to get more than one this time round because retaking the B-bomb site with that AWP, it's not going to be easy. No, he did it with a Deagle, but a FAMAS works just as well. They've got two Molotovs. One of them could end up emo easily. Cold Zera will have to deliver once again. This time only the FAMAS, no grenade, same position, hoping he can find a couple here. FAMAS will be pre-fired and he's got to change things up. They have got his number on that B side of the map. Yeah. Fooled him once, but won't get away with the same trick twice. All of sticking around here. Copenhagen Flames are going to pull this half back. Yeah, it looks like we could be looking at an A7 half. Yeah, and I think that could be better for FaZe. Um, in the sense of if it is a blowout, maybe they take their foot off the gas. If it's close, then it's going to keep that hunger there for them to close. And we already spoken about them looking hot to trot in the road to Rio so far. Yeah, I mean, what are they on? They're on a winning spree, no? Four, yeah. four wins, five wins now? Five wins, I think Damn, it is. Damn, yeah, five and zero. Right now, uh, as well, we have more games going on over there on the B stream. We've got Godsent versus Mouse Sports. You guys can go check that out. It's going to take place over Overpass, Train, and Nuke. And then at the end of the day, Genji versus Cloud9. So that is uh, the semi-final. Yeah, very exciting one. I, would, I really encourage people to check that out. Both Genji and Cloud9 have been uh, in the lab and uh, most flash assists of any team worth checking out Cloud9's play. It looks a bit different to what you may have seen. Yeah, definitely agree. And remember the Genji boys as well used to be Cloud9. So a yeah. uh, bit of a storyline there as well. Didn't necessarily work out for Daps and the boys, but uh, it, it still remains true. I think there's something there. Got a bit of a team speak issue, so we'll be taking an extra technical pause. Oh, we've been doing pretty well today. Yeah, we have. We've got a good track record. We'll just get our feet a little muddy with this one, but all good. And what is happening, guys? Let's theorize with a save FAMAS and AWP. You just basically get a couple of nades around that and... Deagles would be all hope, right. Yeah, that's just, <laughs> good point. Yeah, good point, Chad. They have made those work before, twice. But yeah, in terms of plying those as the weapon in the server, what yeah. you could do is have Brokey go somewhere aggressive early with the AWP, set him out with maybe a flash. He can take a shot. If he scares them into a stack, you could have the three individuals who need to reinvest right now on a bomb site together to potentially capitalize. There's lots of different options you can go for here and nothing is guaranteed to work. Certainly not. Anyone got any stories about wax? Wax? Oh, yeah, back to the wax. Oh, um, yeah. We're going back in. It's all good. We've been saved. Phew. Okay, good. Because I was really running out of wax stories. Uh, I went to Madame Tussauds with Henry. Oh, in which one? Uh, New York. Okay. We, we, we went to Ripley's Believe It oh, or Not. Oh, excuse me, that one. Madame Next to Madame Tussauds. Yeah, we went to Ripley's Believe It or Not. We had quite a great time now. Did it, it have was... the one with the mirror where you're pulling faces in the mirror and then all the other people no, it, see on the other side? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. did that. Everyone has the we classic. were doing all sorts of things. Yeah. Let me tell you, I didn't realize and actually. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
We are going to get into the next round here. Brokey will have the AWB, and uh, we'll see them not really invest much at all. You can see just USPs on or Cold Zero. Nico, Rain gets the PT50, but the, the loss bonus is still the problem here. They're going to get a 2400 in the next round. So they had to save every single penny, even though they had the FAMAS and AWP. But bear in mind, Faze can make this work. Doesn't mean a locked in round for Copenhagen Flames by any stretch of the imagination. All off though, fires off some shots. Breaking needs to be careful. Oh wow, Refresh actually takes him down. Perfect. That was one of the rifles. Nico will pick pick it up and try and make it work. He can hear pins pulled. He decides to take some space. And that's perfect. That's not though. Farlig. He adjusts and he hits them both. Wow. Look at this guy go in the apartments close quarters with the AWP. Bomb down round one. So FaZe is still fine for now. They won't be winning this round, that's for sure. But Nico, fantastic shot towards Boiler. Trying to hold on to the AWP if possible. Rain has nothing. So he's still going to be active here. Probably jumps up towards the bedroom recovering that AK from Boiler. That would make a lot of sense. See if he can get up there cleanly. So far, so good. Just wants to get the AK-47 and get the hell out of there. That's important. Six on the board is great for Copenhagen Flames. If FaZe Clan can get nine to their name, then this would be par for the course as far as Inferno is concerned. Go on rain quickly, Rush. Now he's got the same AK I have, the Neon Rider, Chad. He's not going to bring it up right now, but that's the one. All right. You see that? Here it nice is. Nice and pink. It works for it. It matches there really it nicely with his purple gloves. All right, I'm excited to see this. I can't uh, wait to, to reveal it all. Oh, it's a beautiful thing, that one. We've never, like, skins for me has never really been a thing, but you're getting me a little bit excited with when, the passion now that you I've, two Now I've uh, found it like a, a theme, as it okay. were. It makes a lot more sense. I've got something to aim towards. Instead of having a few nice skins, I've got, like, these are all nice skins, and they all kind of match up. It looks great, feels great. The HUD's looking good. It's like a new and improved game. It's a new and, and improved Henry. And it really is. I don't even recognize the Scarlet Pimpernel. <laughs> so towards B we go once again. Round 14. Copenhagen Flames. Oh! He's... Little he plays anti-flash, and he actually returns his aim well enough to hit the shot. I'm very impressed. Didn't quite get the kill. Impressive nonetheless. Bit of a change up for phases set up here. They'll be boosting and keeping three here on the B site. Does put a bit of extra pressure on Olaf. Doesn't want to get caught in transition. The flash was well timed, but nobody's home. The bomb is making its way towards B. They've got two players who were considering a walk up second middle. It's about the time now where a smoke could do a lot of damage on B. If you have three there, maybe you want to bait them in as opposed to denying them territory. So as their execute comes through, that would be the perfect time to drop it because they have to commit with 30 seconds left. Any CT smokes? Nothing. Instead, oh, it got, does bloom. And with 28 seconds, Rain knows he wants to just catch him in it. They walk straight through him. Touch him, in fact. And he's going to get two. The chaos is brutal. Rain's massacred all three. The round is done. Brokey was flashing as well. The power of a smoke grenade, folks. It was a pretty cool little execution of Copenhagen Flames. Not sure if you caught that chat. They're actually on the half wall. They smoked CT spawn by bouncing it off there. And that same player can actually Molotov towards Emo as well. That was exactly what we're looking for from Copenhagen Flames. We've all seen these B executions so many times, but different variations of them and making players more effective in certain positions. That was really cool to look at. And speaking of cool, Rain shuts him down. The perfectly thrown smoke there. And as you can see, they're coming through the gray screens. And... Uh, He'll be finding no problem whatsoever there. 8-6, they'll be winning out the half, but Copenhagen Flames with six, and they'll have a full buy for round number 15. If they can get seven, that's a great half on the T side. Reigns had a great half as well. 16 frags leading the server at this point. Only one from the Danes has managed to break the double digits. Very fast, deep smoke. Nodios wants to kind of deny all of that control, and his molly does that job perfectly. He's had a rough half, only three kills, two assists, 24 ADR for him after 14 rounds of play. But he's been on the receiving end of quite a bit of damage in that banana area. Well, now it's Cold's job to do a little bit of damage here. Brokey might flash him in when that smoke fades. Here we go. Flash. Frag. Perfect. Can't ask for more. That's a risk. Oh, my God. He knows he's in trouble. He does manage to avoid it in time and drops an incendiary of his own design. 
just ensures his survival here, and they'll re-smoke on top. Wow, FaZe, they've locked out the first test from Copenhagen. Brokey smoke is actually bad. They might try and push through this. It's a little bit too far in the corner, I believe. There might be a gap. Nico's thinking exactly the same thing. He could potentially exploit it, just trying to push them back so they don't explore the option themselves. 45 seconds remain, and Odious, he's alone towards B. He's got a bit of a gap himself, but doesn't spot the cross. Rain, back to the safety of the bomb site here. This will be an A finish. That's the Moto Smoke from Queenix. It's all down to Nodius. He wants to get one kill and then drop back. He's done damage, but he'll have to commit momentarily. He's confirmed that these two players are there. That's a bit as good a cue as any to make their final commitment here. Down to the orb, and it takes significant damage. Okay, Olaf. He's just waiting on that drop from Pit. Spots the balcony. What? He walks straight past Cold Zera. You're playing against Cold Zera, and you do. Copenhagen Flames versus FaZe Clan is the second treat for tonight, and already we have been treated to some. Well, demonstrations of the power of the Deagle and some demonstrations that Copenhagen Flames have definitely done their homework. Now, Chad and I were having a chat on a halftime break there. We've got a feeling that we could see something quite interesting from Copenhagen Flames on their CT side. We saw some of that keenness, the geekiness. Yeah. And I feel like that will be replicated on the CT side. The retakes towards B is what I'm looking for. Great flashes and maybe some aggression as well. Refresh is throwing caution to the wind. He's found absolutely nothing here, Ooh. but a ton of information. This is actually massive. It actually funnels them in towards B. They have no choice now. They know they've lost second middle. The bomb has to go up. It does. And they might commit on this. Nodios, he's trying to tap away the perfectly timed flash. Wow, did you see that? Just as his back was sailing through the smoke and he was visible to Nodios, he gets a full screen white. Brokey's caught the first as well. Five on four, bomb down. Boost? PT really? 50 available for Nico as well. And there is going to be a boost there. You don't really see these on post plants too often. So, oh, it's going to be the double stacks. There's more of the similar mentality to back right. We talked about Emo. Same thing in new boxes. So, did they even go for it? They might do now. Refresh gets them an opening, but the Glock should be able to make light work of them here. Maybe not. Ray misses out on the shot. A three versus Problems. two now. Remember, there's two oh. towards new boxes. With the time so low, I don't think they can check this, especially if he gets all the frags. Comes down to the one versus one. Should have enough time here, Brokey. Done Aye. enough, and it's going to be the burst fight to close things out. Good That's work. That's so impressive from Brokey. So basically, the comms were, right, don't fight. Don't fight. I'm going to bait, see if I can go as long as I can, duel them out. And at some point, he takes his own initiative and takes the fight on construction. I think he realized that there was too many people alive, too many people closing it in on him, and he manages to get a triple kill in total. But that was a really, really big play from Brokey. He was given a little bit of independence, and you can see that he did actually end up taking those fights. He was the one on the right-hand side. Nika was fighting left, and he gets all three. Ten for FaZe. They'll take the first of the second half, and look what they've decided to do. Here we go. It's the old classic. A leaf out of our no boys. Watching. And it's going to work out. The MP9s. Oh, that's fantastic from Hooksy. He's got a third here. Brokey will fend them off, but there's so much power being sent towards the T-step. MP9s down towards middle. It works on all maps, boys, not just for her to go. Why was nobody Zera. watching? I, I guess he was <laughs> anticipating it. But another lesson learned for FaZe and Inferno, I suppose. And that's the round. Copenhagen Flames, we knew there'd be some cheese. And they present us with a fantastic, well-aged Camembert in round two. Charging down middle with MP9s and FaZe caught off guard. They can't believe it. I can't believe it. That's a great call. You can see they weren't anticipating at all. If it's a PG-50, he probably gets one of those kills with the MP9. It's the sewing machine. If it gets up close and personal, it's going to do a lot of damage, a high rate of fire, the running gun potential of it all. And you can see it just finding those two very quick kills, overwhelming for FaZe. They have the force buy back themselves. They're 10-7. There's Tech 9s, Desert Eagles, and a lot of players down second middle. That's what the jump before we were talking about. Refresh spot three. He can confirm it's on a B rush. And they can change their position now. Three towards quad. I, I honestly think that just then, re-watching what happened on Skybox, FaZe were trying to run something different from what they normally would because Brokey ran all the way into T Apartments, got told something, turned around, came back to cover mid, but was just too little too late. So maybe a miscommunication from FaZe, but this is their chance to show us what the A explosions look like. Two top mid, have to fight. Does get all of that space into pit, but obviously... Needs a bit more than that. There's three players on short, but a massacre from Refresh. I missed that one. Triple kill, just to confirm the round. It is already over. Rain getting into pit. It's exciting, but unfortunately, they know exactly where he is. And now, a bit of a roll reversal. He runs out of bullets. 
and he will go down. So Copenhagen Flames, they do pass the first test. And there's MP9s now upgraded to some AKs as well. Yeah, they pass with flying colors, if you don't mind me saying, because that was the force buy from FaZe. They are left with nothing here. It's going to be the $1,900 loss bonus that's only available to them here. So they got to take a full eco. Can't really justify a single penny of investment. They need the 2400 next round, and that'll be enough for AK's armor and basic utility. One smoke and two flashes each. They love the second, this alt mid flash. It's so refreshing to get this information relatively safely. Didn't see anything there. But he sticks around this time. He wants to push up. He knows it's an eco. He knows he can take all of this space for free. And well, look how free it is. Olaf Meister leaping around the corner, alternating to burst mode. And well, a burst of MP9 bullets does take him down. Well, Chad. I guess we've explained it a million times at this point. Why do FaZe go so slowly with the Glocks? Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all the Counter-Strike fans, <laughs> all all fans will be in it for back. The reason that teams, when they are on a full eco on the T side, will take rounds this agonizingly slowly when they only have Glocks is because every penny counts. They can bait out CT utility. They can get them to be a little bit impatient. Yep. And they can potentially overwhelm and pick up a kill. So Nodi, you could be that on the agenda this evening. He'll go down. That's a big frag. That's what they were looking for. That baited out more nades. That's Ooh. a second. It's actually not bad at all. We have a phase. Remember, not a single dollar invested. They get two kills for it. Just because they're so patient, waiting for any CTs to get out of position. They do actually recover that M4 at the end. They just a little no nice uh, awareness. So you won't see many players thinking of that. Yeah, that's one thing that we don't tend to talk about too much. When the rounds do end, you see players, they're running around, they're scavenging, they're saying, there's a smoke over here, there's a Molotov here, come pick this up. And then shooting a gun in your teammate's direction, well, that's one of the things that costs the most money, so that's even better. Now, FaZe, with the guns out, can they right this wrong? We've got 18 kills for Cold Zero, 16 for Rain. All off down the bottom there on nine. So things aren't looking horribly for FaZe right here, but they are definitely put on notice. They're gonna need to pull out some of their A game to close this one out. Yeah, nothing else will cut it. Copenhagen Flames, a well-refined squad. Smoke up top middle, but they're not respecting it. And Farlig, he'll get it and get away. That's a lovely execution from the Orpa. He will be smoked off, forced to reposition further. Refresh, getting the information that there are T's in present in long, but they decide to forego that. And Farlig with the information that they are oh. perhaps crossing back. And oh, what? Just on the edge of the smoke, they catch the B aggressor. They know that that means the full rotate must have come in. He wouldn't have the confidence or the conviction to be going for that without CTs in library. Back to the four on four. Nico with just a single kill so far. It's Farlig to open things up though with the Orb Tours quad. 10 to nine, FaZe are losing the grip of their lead rapidly. Three rounds in a row for Copenhagen Flames after FaZe won the pistol. And it's still a very difficult scenario for them. They have really no map control. A couple of flashes and one smoke. So I, I assume it's gonna be the flash attack. Um, we'll see Brokey set up the Moto smoke and flash them out. They're just gonna leap out for the hope of the they best. It's not the best setup here. But they have busted through. Good enough flash. Gets them out in the pit, but they don't check close and refresh. He can't believe his luck. It's a free frag onto Nico. Three remain for FaZe. Olof hits a banger of a shot, but it may not be enough. Certainly not now. Refresh continues to deliver. Even landing a dink onto Broke. He's got 20 seconds to make an impossible round. And so Hooksy, he's the one to find the final frag, but Refresh gets all the credit. He's on 18 frags. He has had no issues overcoming FaZe Clan when he gets tested. This one, he can't believe his luck. Well, that's a textbook 2-2 setup that you would see from teams when they lose the opening. What you do is you leave mid to be open and you try and defend the wrap from that pit position of where Refresh was sitting. And then you have one guy playing bike. So that's a very powerful crossfire. You can play off of each other. You can keep them at range. And you can see exactly what happens if they come out of apps. And that puts the two B players on the B side. If you have an AWPer, he can normally sit triple box, go for AWPing towards CT spawn, and they can lock that all down. But look how confident this individual yeah. is. These are the sort of plays you want to see from young AWPers as well. They've got confidence and not scared by the big names they have ahead of them. So he doesn't get anything for it, but at least he's showing he's got those sort of moves up his sleeve. And they've got full B control as well on the CT side. Up against a couple of Tech Nines here. I assume it'll be more of the same. A couple of flashes and smokes, try and get up together. Trade out some kills, but a very defensive setup for Copenhagen Flames here. Sorry, no, Dios. This should have them dead to rights. And yeah, the frags are all flowing for the CDs. Farlig and Nodios deal with that. And Olaf does manage to use his Hold signature on. weapon. There's a chance here. With uh, Nodios. In spawn alone, he has got a bit of backup now. They've got a rifle. Smoke to go down. 
If he doesn't get the quick kill on all of my, so they might get oh, a the run boost. Is this where it changes? So if he tracks, what? oh my god, he prepared for both the pre-fire. He gets the first, all of Meister down. Now Nico, the next to be added to the list. Farlik, he will pick it up. 18 frags now for him. He's got his second at the end of that round. So 6K on Brokey. They do have the opportunity to map, but uh, wasn't enough to find a round there. A good attempt. Almost got a plan out of it, but not meant to be. Four in a row now. The Copenhagen Flames have taken the lead on Inferno. This map, it's been troublesome for FaceCon, to say the very least. We haven't seen much of a single gun run in second half, and Brokey, it looks like he's going for oh leaping into the Flames here. Double kill for Hooksy. Refresh, pumping out a lot of damage to a system as well. And what an HE grenade that is. They are bullying them towards B. This is great stuff from Copenhagen Flames. I, same with the Na'Vi versus Simon game. This is not what we were expecting. This is not the Counter-Strike that I think when I woke up today, I would have been seeing and commentating. It is looking very good for Copenhagen Flames right here. It's exciting. I mean, just seeing so many teams developing and growing under the, uh, the trying times. It's a lot of time, a lot of Counter-Strike being played, and I'm sure that, you know, a part and parcel of FaZe's uh, ups and downs. Admittedly, it's been mostly ups here on the road to Rio, but a lot of that previously was, was put down to the travel schedule, as you ha talked about before. No such travel. FaZe continuing to battle against a very well-developed Copenhagen Flames. A good flash. Queenix, he's avoided it all. He's got complete vision for this fight, but he is burning quite considerably, stands his oh. ground and gets away. He's done enough. Look at the flashbang coming in as well. This is going to catch Olof Meister. It's down to the three versus two at 35 seconds oh, remaining. Molotov to put it. Fluff the smoke, you're right. And that's going to lead into a kill. The bomb goes down. Cold Zera, he's going on Inferno, but I don't think he stands a chance here unless he gets a quick kill. Can he find it? This is it. And it will be Hooksy picking up his third of this particular round. They are looking like a solid team. The first time I've ever commentated Copenhagen Flames. Thoroughly impressed yeah and one of the key things here on this ct side is they are winning all of the opening jewels they've only conceded one that was the pistol round and that is the only round in this half that they've given up in terms of an opening frag so you're telling me that copenhagen flames have won the opening jewel 21 times five times second half only oh second, second half, half i missed only. that sorry, very sorry. important second half uh, only that's that very important i got you a bit excited there yeah, yeah i was like that doesn't that doesn't sound right okay cool makes more sense now Charging in towards B with a flash, and yeah, last man to the party was called Sarah. Oh, no. Has anyone seen FaZe Clan? Because they've just disappeared. Yeah, they are MIA right now. Kaboom. This is turning into another game. They might want to forget Inferno. The same battleground. And it's Rain, Nico, and Olaf Meister with half HP. Tech Nine's in their hand. And a couple of throwaway smokes here. They can smoke Coffins and spawn. But again, this is where they'll put the brakes on and see whether any CZ make mistakes, but I don't think Copenhagen Flames will. They have looked pretty spot on so far. Rain hasn't had a kill this half. Yeah, I was going to say, we haven't really said his name at all in these first five. He is the uh, key for this team in terms of entry frags. So we're going to need to see FaZe come online. I don't, I don't see a world in which they win this round after the early stages. They obviously have the ability to battle back, but first of all, they need to make sure they're not giving away the opening pick. They need to be converting one themselves. And then they have to make sure they're not taking all this utility damage because three individuals having to limp on through this B bomb site, they can just get spammed down with ease. Here they come. And looks like no issues for Nodios on the first two. In fact, it's just all off and he doesn't really have to do too much. He's staring at the floorboards, will be pushed down. Oh, was that a knife attempt from Nodios there? Yeah, I hope so. Oh, it looks like they are feeling themselves. 13 then for Copenhagen Flames, FaZe Clan. They'll have rifles again, but running out of chances. They need to break through. One thing I will say is uh, FaZe are currently, what, 5-0 and zero right now in the league, so this isn't a must-win game for them by any it's stretch, true. and Copenhagen Flames are much hungrier in that respect, so I don't think FaZe are swinging for the fences in particular. I'm not saying that's a reason why they would yeah. lose this, but they might not be getting their absolute A game out of this, not saving strats or anything like that, but don't want it to give too much away, considering they're so secure in the league thus far. Yeah, it's a, it's a liberty that you're afforded when you perform so well at the start of a tournament. Hooksy. Wow, again, same player. Double kill again. Just like that. And look at the far back refreshes. They can't believe it. They're getting wrecked out there, boys. This is an absolute oh my God. destruction oh, of phase kind of refresh. Stuns us with a three-piece. That's an amazing bit of sequence. I love that. Copenhagen Flames are really up for this. They're showing great amount of confidence, pushing down with orbs, rifles, MP9s. You name it. They are ready to take these challenges. Hooksy again with the double kill. Assisted flashbang from Farlig as well. They had no idea Refresh would be down there. And my God, does he make this work? 
this adjustment onto Rainy. I can't believe that he had the, the time to adjust after the first bullet already had connected from Rainy. He was still looking at top mid. Look what that's done to FaZe Clan. That puts them on the timeout and on 3.8k on average. I mean, my goodness, that's, that's a tough conversation they're having right now. Yeah, look, uh, if I'm going to be honest with you and the viewers at home, I'm prepping my clips for a Copenhagen Flames win on Inferno right now. I so think might be on something there. So they have maximum loss bonus, but have they even got the bomb down? This half? Chad, they haven't got the bomb planted. They are going for Other a half pistol. by... They haven't got the bomb planted yep. once, and they won the pistol. This is unfathomable. Oh, my goodness. Well, Tech Nines, Deagles, and... Oh, like now already misses out on that opening kill. Not a single plant. That really doesn't bode well to trying to recover this game and you're starting off with Tech Nines and Deagles to avoid map point. So again, similar mentality to the Nephilimco. Trying to bait out the incendiaries, the smokes, to the best of their ability. Suggest they go in one area, they smoke off towards Arch, and they're heading back towards B from what I can see so far. Bomb still towards apartments on the back of Coldzera. He'll slowly and loudly join his teammates. The smoke from Olof Meister is going to land on that half wall, for as far as I know. That's the fast from spawn, half wall smoke for progress. Let's see if that's even deeper. Is that CT spawn? Looks like it. Ooh, it's it. not right? missed no, it. he went. That's where he wanted it to go. Yeah, just worried about the uh, the roof glitch. The roof snipers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotta watch out for them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, there's a lot of people tagged up already. Those bullets from the CTs and oh my lord, it's chaos for Nodios. He runs out of bullets. Hooksy in trouble as well. One of those shots could connect. Olaf catching a bit more lead through the box and does look like Cold Zero will be allowed to get that bomb down. The first from Phase's T side. That should be enough for Copenhagen Flames. Oh. Refresh has had enough. His aim is crazy right now. Really impressive scenes from the youngster as we see them get map point against FaZe. That's the first bomb plant of this half. We're going into round number 26 after this, I believe. So pretty remarkable scenes for Copenhagen Flames. That's pretty much a locked in victory in my book. I agree with Chad. Refresh gets himself another three kills in total. Takes his total up to 24 and 16. He's top fragging on the server right now. And for good reason. Hooksy as well has looked uh, remarkable towards B, and that's the partnership that's looked so good. Refresh had a game the other day, I think it was like the first half, and I was like, Henry, Refresh has like 25 kills or something right now. This yeah. was while we were at home watching one exactly. of the matches on TV. He's been a bit of a beast, and I think that this team, they're showing their hunger, they're showing their uh, ability to soak up all this knowledge and then put tweaks on things, right? Because they're doing that's little it. quirky plays. That's it. A lot of teams will like take an Astralis demo and think, oh, if they're doing it this way, we need to replicate it down to the T. We need to make sure it's exactly the same, but everything can be improved upon. There's always going to be a chance to find a better flash or a quicker smoke, things like this, and different variations of these strategies that catch the other teams off guard. It'll be the same foundations, the same ideas and philosophies, but you can see they've really put their own flair on it. Copenhagen Flames with the aggression on the CT side. Look at this boost. It's, it, I can't think of a better round to do it. You haven't done it all round long, and now Refresh boosted up in order to find this elusive 16th. Perhaps it's not so much for Copenhagen Flames. Doesn't reveal it too much. You can hear the apartment's aggression. It's rain making all the noise. The elephant in apps. Less commonly talked about than the elephant in the room, but he's still there. They regroup all the way. Same smoke from the previous round. Let's see if Broking can give us a better example of how it goes. Ah, he didn't move forward. It's a movie forwardy one. Yeah, CT smoke is. from spawn. That's hot. Yeah, very cool stuff, but doesn't wow. really lead into much success. Farleg making a name for himself in this particular series. They're going apps. The timing, Queenix was about to give up. He has, however, got what? back in time and he hits it. Nico goes down, Rain has a chance. And a big one for FaZe Clan. 3v3 and bomb down on A. Nodius gets past the flames here. Makes his way towards quad. He needs to find a quick kill. They might be unsuspecting considering he pushed through the fire. All off towards the apartments. Bit of a trifecta set up here. One in sight, one in the pit. Brokey low. Vulnerable to that HE. Nodios has it. If he needs a pit, he gets a freebie. But he has no idea. 
Ooh, I like the smoke, but Olof, he's managed to catch one. Nodios reveals his location. Olof's doing it all. Brokey's such low HP. Olaf just needs to survive. Brokey can take the first contact, and he does. FaZe, they do survive their first test on match point. A lot of work to do here to get back into this game, though. Yeah. I, this is one of those scenarios where I say it's a matter of time, and it's a matter of time until Copenhagen Games closes this out. If Hooksy pushes Banana and gets another double kill, if they go back into any of their old strategies or tendencies, Copenhagen plans to be ready for it. This is great stuff from Olaf. A very... Big round from him. He was relatively quiet in the first half, but he's turned things around here. Nico, surprisingly, only 14 kills to his name. He is down the bottom of the barrel right now for FaZe Clan. Let's see if he can step it up. The captain, in-game leader, and most of the time, superstar for FaZe. He's got a lot of work on his plate. Right then. Round 27. Is this where it comes crashing down for FaZe? And Copenhagen Flames will pick up their map pick. Nico. Does bust through the initial utility towards B. Doesn't take any damage, but as I said, I, I assume this team will have a retake mentality on the CT side. You can see them set up for this perfectly. You got Nodius, who's on the corner. He could just be baited in by Farlik here, though. We'll see what they've got in mind. All right, it's going to be the push, and this could be perfect. They've just boosted up. The flashbang is insane, but Brokey from the logs will be taking the first, and there is a shot in return. Farlik, he doesn't want to give in. He really doesn't. And that CT middle. smoke. Oh, this is big. Yeah, they've done a very good job here, FaZe. But still two players towards A. Down to refresh. Not going to do anything. And now Queen X will be removed as well. Round over. Looking for overtime. FaZe might do it. So they should chase because they take these guns away from Copenhagen Flames. Their money's about to bottom out. They'll only get a $1,900 loss bonus. If they get to hold on to the AWP in Farley's hands, with some of the shots that he's been hitting, I don't know about you guys, I feel like he could almost single-handedly win them the round. Plus, Hooksy's alive. He's been doing fantastic as far as opening jewels are concerned. It's four and one right now. He is. Five and one for Farlig. So, time for a mini round within the round. It's going to be Farlig defending the B site, Hooksy alongside it. They're desperately trying to hold on to their weapons, and FaZe have got three people hunting them. So, let's see how this mini game within the game goes down. Holding on to his rifle for another try. Good tag. Bides his time. Hooks, he could be caught off guard here by the player above him. He's got too many targets and he does go down. But Farlik, you talked about it. He maintains his AWP and he could do enough with that weapon. There's no doubt about of his ability. Now, do they want to fully invest here? Yes, I agree. Get the tactical timeout going. Let's discuss our options. You've got enough of Farlik to drop an M4 to go with Hooks, you can buy. Nodius cannot, but Queenix can. I would say. A partial buy might be enough here at this stage. Deagle's basic utility with the orb, cause as much damage as you can and go for a really strong buy. When you only forward. need one. Exactly. Yeah. And when you're the, the underdog, the team is more tactical perhaps, and you're up against a team like FaZe, maybe don't sabotage your own finances with a full investment. I think they are leaning towards my suggestion. Nobody else with the utility so far. I'd like to see just a P250 with that. Oh, they are going for it. Okay, so... This is a, a big risk, but it, it's fine. It's a justified one. You can still see three M4s there. It's a UMP for a fresh. Lots of utility out there. A fresh, though, will have to make this SMG work. He's been so good at the rifles so far. Top fragger on the server, along with Cold Zero, he's got 24. Just to know, Hooksy, that CTB player, he's got 407 utility damage Damn. right now. So Damn. that's massive for him. He's doing a lot of damage on that side of the map. Not only with the bullets, but with the incendiaries and grenades as well. Lots of early damage dealt. It's rather symmetrical, though, so no clear front runner in our 28th round. Nico has been given the AWP because of his low HP, and he's trying as hard as he might to try and catch something early. Previously, Rain exploited a gap through Long here. And they're gonna try it again, perhaps. And Harlig with that AWP, still standing his ground on B. Is he gonna really re-peak again? It works he well, it. he hits Olof in the fingertips. Oh, it's the same approach as usual, though. The wrap towards the A site, two players to defend once again, and it's Queenix. Has he done enough now? Four versus... Five, but you can see Olaf Meister and Nico incredibly low. Nine points of health between them. 
Queen needs to repositions there. Got to deal with Cold Zera. Absolutely nails him. <laughs> Maybe. Refresh. A couple of years down the track, we'll be going for knives in that case, but he's more about the round wins, and it looks like they've done enough. Brokey would have to hit a 1v5. He's got 15 seconds left. Nodios does give him the fight, but Jumps. planting could be difficult. Another fake. And refresh. Oh, if only. But Furlig will catch him.